So, as you might have seen, Intel CPUs are getting, well, kind of tricky to recommend at the moment. This, uh, we want to discuss today what that all is about, what actually is happening within these CPUs, and then we want to discuss what Intel is going to do about it and how long that's gonna take, and what actually can you do about it to prevent your 14th uh, generation CPU from having the same issues that many people that use these CPUs extensively under high load are having right now. So first of all, what's the issue? Well, if you haven't watched any videos from Gamers Nexus or Der Bauer, for example, it basically comes down to Intel CPUs being pretty unstable after an amount of time being used. This has to do with electro migration. So basically, while the through the CPU there's flowing a lot of uh, power, so a lot of electricity, and that is the cause for atoms in the CPU to move to different places, and that causes those instabilities. If you want to know exactly what that is about or what electro migration is about, I would suggest you watch the video from Der Bauer. He explains it pretty well and shows an example where it was tested by a lab and actually shown under an electron microscope and there you were able to see what that influences. The gist of it is, is that, well, because of that CPUs are getting unstable, so they crash in demanding applications with their stock clock speeds, stock power limits, stock voltages, etc. And the issue why that is happening is basically because Intel is pushing the limits of, well, basically power and power consumption. New CPUs, or rather 13th and 14th generation CPUs are running at that high of a power level. We already know that because there aren't a lot of coolers that are able to handle the full power of these CPUs, which can be upwards of 250 watts. And that is the reason why that happens. The more power is put through that CPU, the heavier or the faster that electro migration happens. And that also is not only because of the power, because these power limits that are defined by Intel are obviously used while gaming or while uh, in video e editing, 3D modeling, for example, or for example, also in the servers. We had some issues or have seen some issues with CPUs in Minecraft servers that have been degrading and crashing and this is also an issue there. And that is because in the microcode for the CPUs, in basically within the BIOS, Intel gives a few specific voltages and also power states that the CPU can use. And these power states and voltages seem to be pretty high and therefore that stuff happens. So what does Intel want to do about this? Well, they said they wanted to do a microcode update that will reduce those voltages because that's not only happening under load, but also kind of happening on idle because the CPUs are targeting voltages on idle that aren't really needed. Although, yes, there is not flowing as much power through the CPU, obviously, it is still being kind of an influence to that problem because it is more power than there is supposed to be in an idle condition. Also, can you obviously warranty your CPU or send it in for RMA? Yes, Intel says that if you have a CPU that is affected, so from the uh, 14600K and up, so every chip that is above 65 watts is affected, you can send them in for RMA and get a replacement chip. Will that fix it? Well, not until the microcode update is actually patched, so until the BIOS is updated, and obviously not everyone is gonna do that microcode update or is gonna do that BIOS update, and not everybody's gonna send in their chip for RMA, so a lot of people might not actually use that opportunity that Intel gives them. So that's kind of an issue, especially if, for example, buy a CPU used. The other issue is there, that if that microcode update is going to be implemented, what about the performance? The advertised performance obviously says that these CPUs are very good for gaming and also for professional work such as video editing, 3D modeling, etc. 
applying lower voltages and therefore also lowering maybe the power limits and therefore maybe also lowering the clock speeds the CPUs can achieve uh, will actually alter the power capabilities of these CPUs. So you might be looking at a lower performance level than you were before, which can be a problem as for advertising goes, obviously. Also, the power limits can be changed to a different state, for example, lowered to prevent the electromigration or just get it to a level where it is acceptable and the CPU will last a longer time. So we will have to see how that turns out. But what can you do about that? Well, there are actually a lot of things that you can do about it. If you have a not very low end motherboard, so at least like B560 and up, most H510 motherboards tend to kind of discard of the voltage adjustment features, but probably you're not gonna use a 300 plus dollar chip on a 80 or 100 dollar motherboard. So you probably have a B560 motherboard at least, so that shouldn't be an issue, but you have the capability to actually adjust the voltages accordingly. While providing the CPU with a fixed voltage might not be the solution you're looking for, it is possible to use an offset voltage to lower the voltages on the CPU or that are introduced to the CPU on the complete usage spectrum. So on idle, in part load, in full load, and even with AVX 512 instruction sets. And that can be made so that the CPUs pull actually less power but the thing is that while you might need to lower these voltages by like 0.1 volt or 100 millivolt to be on the safe side for example you might also have to lower the maximum clock speeds of the turbo states as well maybe 100 to 200 megahertz while you may lose some power there it's probably not going to be a huge amount, especially in gaming, while yes, in Counter-Strike or whatever, you might lose like 10 FPS. If you have like 400 FPS, uh, it's not really that much. But you will gain a lot of lifetime out of your CPU. Another thing is obviously, if you don't wanna adjust the voltages and get into that deeper stuff, you can just reduce the power limits because Keeping those power limits lower, for example, at a maximum of 150, 180 watts, will reduce temperatures and lower temperatures actually also reduce the amount of electromigration that happens. So that's a solution that you can also do and that will provide a longer lifespan. So what do you actually think about this issue? Have you had any problems with your Intel 14th or 13th generation? Let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll be happy about to hear about that and if well, people have had these issues before in a well, gaming scenario. That's it for now. I wish you a nice day and goodbye.